Hello, I'm Dal Bartling, and I certainly hope that you and yours are having yourself a sunnier, warmer day. Well, here I am, realizing the older I am, the more that I think. And I'm here at the desk, kind of revisiting with two old mentors, Dale Carnegie and Zig Ziglar. Today, I'd like to cover a little bit more of Dale Carnegie. In this one chapter, he has a very important principle entitled give honest sincere appreciation give honest sincere appreciation after reading that chapter and thinking about those three little words honest sincere appreciation I got thinking about who are some people that mentored me didn't know they were maybe doing it on those very principles well let me give you a, a couple and then reflect on maybe how they ended up on some of my life's past first one was of course you might have guessed my adoptive father sergeant major bartling you see, he had uh, the many times I would observe many soldiers under him. And I would go with him, particularly on weekends, to the base and be with him. And more than once I would observe how he would give specific instructions ask for feedback and then come back later and follow up to have that appreciation and give that honest, sincere thank you and appreciation for doing that and telling them oh, a good job. So after maybe in the morning he had given some instructions after we went to the mess hall and had lunch, he'd come back and he would check with that particular uh, soldier. And then he would listen on the journey, the little journey that that soldier took in doing that particular job that was given him. And then, of course, then he would, <clears throat> in effect, give him that, that a boy and a pat on the back. And those young men really appreciated that. And uh, he would carry that further as far as mentoring them. And he would bring them home for, for dinner uh, many times. Kind of, as the phrase goes, would sincerely take them under his wing. Another uh, mentor that maybe didn't know he was doing so, was also in the military. This was a Sergeant Lefty Menard. Sergeant Lefty Menard, that's how I know him as. I couldn't tell you what his first name is. But Lefty was, as you can imagine, left-handed. Lefty played first base. Lefty would play uh, on, the, on the softball league and we'd go and, and, and watch him. Lefty had the responsibility of being the huh, camp uh, chef. He was responsible for feeding the camp. And so he had many, many uh, soldiers under him. And I can remember <clears throat> going back in the back of the mess hall where the work was done. And oh, I can envision, of course, it wasn't very big, but the big, enormous pots that would be going and the work that individualized that those, those soldiers would be doing. And sometimes we would go back there and we'd have breakfast or we'd have lunch with Lefty and some of the soldiers. And Lefty did not hesitate. 
that he would stop and uh, <clears throat> he would make a point to take a taste of what the soldier was cooking and uh, he would ask them what they think of it. And then he would then, again, build them up and show that sincere appreciation. As I said, those two individuals with their style and having the responsibility of those soldiers under them did not hesitate to show that sincere appreciation. And the soldiers knew it was indeed honest in coming from them. Because believe me, both of them could get a little critical and chew you out if you needed to be. I had the benefit of my life's journey to work with young people. Twice a year, I would take a group of young people. I mean, we would have probably six, six young men that would take a challenge on with me. And we do that twice a year. We would go out and in a uh, commercial kitchen down by uh, uh, Custer, South Dakota, a little bit west of uh, the Crazy Horse Monument. We would then feed for the weekend, so Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, leaving at noon, we would take care of about 50 to 60 uh, young people and adults. These people would come to be known as KPs. Now you think of <clears throat> maybe a military term, KP being a kitchen patrol. Well, this stood for Kits Patrol. A, a gentleman that again was a mentor of mine and he passed away in a car accident and so we named this group of young people that worked with me, uh, Kits Patrol. And so I would come in garb like this, ready to do our challenge, which was to feed those people that time. And then each and every one of those boys then would have then their own uh, covering also. And we would together, and we would meet together a little bit ahead of time. And we would use such things as maybe this right here. See, this is called Not Your Mama's Baked Beans. And it says how much it's going to serve. It tells what's needed and how to do it. So, here's what, it's, uh, what we hope it's going to look like. Here's the <clears throat> ingredients, and here's how, how to do it. And so you would give the instructions to a young person and ask if they had any questions. And then you'd go around and then at different times uh, do the old test taste and give them that a boy that they would very, very much appreciate it. Friday evening, Friday evening, we'd have fish on a log with bruschetta, scout soup, and beef stew. We'd have a dessert, angel food cake with vanilla pudding, crushed pineapples, and put on top, strawberries. Refrigerated, and that was our dessert. For breakfast, we got up, we had apple cake, we had peanut cake, we had oatmeal, hash browns, Chilled can, fruit, hot chocolate, coffee, and of course, syrup and peanut butter. Well, then for lunch, we did outdoor demonstrations. We didn't use the commercial cook uh, kitchen. We cooked outdoors. This was an outdoor experience to me. So we had <clears throat> um, called Baloo's. We took, uh, had uh, banana boats. We had uh, foil cooking. We had donut holes, we had a bamboo steamer, we had what we called canoes, which was hoagie buns, you'd cut and then put mock crab and then put cheese on top, mm -hmm. pretty good. We had what we called egg McMountains, kind of a takeoff on the, you can guess it, the egg <clears throat> McMuffin there. We actually did some baking in a box oven, 
cardboard box oven. We used a clay pot, clay pot that you then uh, plant your, your flowers to sh out on your, on your deck. We used that clay pot to make a volcano and we'd cook a pork butt with apple cider. Now there was only six boys that were helping me do this. And I had two adults that uh, also helped me, but it was just those six boys. Boy, we appreciated them. They were busy. We also used a Dutch oven. In the Dutch oven, we made chislik, lamb chislik. Then we came to our dinner, for our dinner. Here's what they made for dinner. Get this, folks. They made from a recipe called Stevenson's Farm uh, Chicken. It was chicken that you put some butter on and then put some, uh, like some, some uh, buttermilk on and then let it cook in the oven. It was delicious. They made that. They had salmon with honey on a cedar board. They had fried, uh, fried catfish, a pork butt, uh, hand mashed potatoes. You gotta always peel potatoes and mash the potatoes up, don't you? We made corn fritters. We had strawberry cake. We had brisket beef. Am I making you hungry? We had meatballs with uh, milk gravy. We had a Dutch oven chicken. <laughs> we had Dutch oven chicken with dumplings. We had plantains, fried plantains. We had steamed asparagus in a bamboo steamer. We roasted some potatoes along with some sweet potatoes. We had chocolate crackers. We took a cracker, we melted some uh, <clears throat> chocolate on that, and then put some walnuts on top of that, crushed walnuts. We had stuffed mushrooms, stove, uh, stop, <laughs> stove top, easy, easy for me to say, stove top stuffing we cooked with a little bruschetta uh, ham. And then <clears throat> we took that stuffing and put it in uh, mushroom caps and then roasted that. Oh, pretty darn good. We made salmon cakes and we had brownies. For breakfast, the next day, we had hash browns, we had sausage gravy, we had amaretto, French toast, muffins, hot chocolate, and then we made, of course, then sack lunches for them to go. Now, these boys were chosen. They were nominated and then chose these boys, these six boys. We tried to go a little bit in thirds that uh, some boys were veteran boys had done it more than once. Others had done it maybe a couple of times and others uh, just for the first time. So we had that. So we had mentors, mentees mentoring uh, <coughs> other boys there and uh, letting them know there. As you could see, they were very, very busy. Uh, and the one young man, Jamie, uh, even after the three times, he still wanted to come. And boy, he was very, very, very good. And you could see Jamie uh, grow in that uh, and at the end the uh, participants though the boys and the adults that attended the training session they did not hesitate to time and time again to collectively uh, show their appreciation to those boys and then as adults particularly would come up to me and give a thanks and say don't thank me i want you to go to each one of those boys if you would please and, and thank them because they worked tirelessly in taking on that that challenge there. And that made me reflect when I got in this chapter here about those, uh, <clears throat> those words there. Give honest. You know, don't just flatter the person. Be honest about it. Show that appreciation. As close as you can to the event, the better it will be. Later, when those boys would actually get their rank of eagle, there was a special award, a very, very special award, a special statue that was given to those boys by being part of that, uh, that uh, kids uh, patrol there. And believe me, uh, it was uh, sincere. Uh, kind of an interesting word, the word sincere. Gonna, <clears throat> I hear that it comes from an Italian word, Latin word, uh, sincere. And uh, the story goes that as a sculpture would get a 
big piece of stone to do the sculpturing with from the quarry, he would then, you know, work on it very, very meticulously. And lo and behold, as he would get working, he may have found a crack. And sometimes that crack, that fissure crack would, would move in that statue. So what some sculptures would do, rather than start over, they would take some of the dust, mix it with a little bit of, of water, and then make that kind of wax, and they would then put that over that crack. So it appeared that there was no crack in that statue at all. And so the <clears throat> truly honest sculptures would put out a sign and they would put no sinceri, no dust. There is no sculpture dust covering up the imperfections on this sculpture. No sinceri. To be sincere is to be honest. Give that honest appreciation. Let me ask you this. How many different opportunities do you think in a day are you going to have to give clear, honest, sincere appreciation? Whether that be a family member, whether that be a teacher, whether that be a person that's serving you, as, such as a cook, all of those are opportunities, folks. And I think what Mr. Carney is getting across here in chapter two is don't miss out on those opportunities. Because those people will surprise you if you just give them a little appreciation. Sincere and honest appreciation. So, with that opportunity out there, continue to go out and enjoy your sunnier, warmer day. And you know what? No, I bet you do. I'm rooting for you. Because we're in this together. And I do know this. Blessed are they who ease the pain of misfortune, for they shall be called insurance agents. You take care.